Astrometry log. It is July 1st, 2011. It's approximately 2208 UTC at the time of this recording. This is an informal earthquake watch and a watch for a few cyclonic systems that I expect will be forming in the next few days. This is an informal watch because this particular coronal disturbance may be associated with ongoing activity in Japan that is of a lower level than uh, something that I would normally watch for. Uh, one of the telltale features is that the active regions that are adjacent to this particular hole are not particularly large and they are not consistent. In other words, they aren't consistently present as this feature formed on Solar Corona. And so it does extend through uh, multiple bands in the higher frequency bands. You can see it's over on the edge here. It has a, a mirrored form similarity with the ongoing activity in Japan. And so this is, I suspect, and I'm not certain about this, but I suspect that this is the hypertime shadow uh, of orbital inconsistency. In other words, this particular area on the Earth is inconsistent in its time-space translation in a way which is significant enough that it shows up as a sort of uh, a phase interference in the hypertime translation of the Earth. That's the theory behind this. And so this is what I usually use. This is the model I usually use to sort out whether or not I'm going to do a watch. But I don't usually put this in my formal watches because I just want to say what I have concluded rather than expressing that. And so I thought I would take this opportunity to just sort of go over the way that I put these together. Now, notice that this does close up before it goes over the goes over the uh, limb and this is uh, on the 30th here and I'm going to go ahead and reverse it and we can see the uh, the hole closing up slowly as it moves towards the limb uh, the edge of the sun over here now there was another feature that was very very similar to this that when it went over the limb uh, previously this feature the feature that we're seeing right here formed over here. So this feature formed when another similar feature closed up and went over the limb. And this is what I'm what I'm expecting um, as we see this activity in Japan, which is ongoing. Now, if this active region was up here and it had been consistent from the time that it came across uh, the limb over here, if this active region had been over here and it came across the limb with it, then I would say that this might be a quake that was uh, fairly significant. What I'm suspecting is that this ongoing activity is what associates with this particular disturbance. And unfortunately, the higher frequency energy is dropping off right now, and so this is not a good sign for earthquake timing. Um, earthquakes that happen, uh, that have been the really big quakes, have happened on the down points, on the downside of the solar activity. And there have been a no number of people who have asked me about this hole and other indicators. And um, I didn't find that this was a significant enough disturbance to do a formal watch on. I am watching it. Um, there are, however, several large coronal mass ejections. This is one that happened on the 28th, which are unusually far north. Now, this is... This is not something we usually see. Um, it is something that happens at the beginning of the cycles. The active regions uh, towards the beginning cycles are higher latitude um, disturbances. And I'm suspecting that this will be associated with another very large northern or high latitude uh, cyclonic system on the Earth. There are three of these. And this is the first one on the 28th. And there was another on the 29th, which will probably be a large tropical system, not a, not a category three or above, probably a category two. This is probably going to be a category two system. If you trace the latitude, if you trace this, this source of the ejection back into the solar disk, this corresponds to the, to the latitude on the earth that this will form. And this very well could be a tropical system. It's still kind of it's still kind of high latitude. These tropical systems usually don't don't form outside of the more equatorial regions, 
usually the ones what we see associated with the big uh, tropical cyclones come right off of the, the solar equator. And so this is still um, pretty high latitude, but this could be a tropical system forming in the next two days, starting to form in the next two days. And so this is a, a, an advanced forecast. So the, the storm itself uh, may peak in about six to nine days. So there's, there's a nine day window between the time that these eject and the time that they, um, you know, get on their, 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 their full uh, effect. And so that's something that I'm watching. Also, there's another northern ejection that is just happening. This is just starting up. And this happened here on the 1st. And I don't know how big this is going to be. But again, this is very high latitude. This is not a tropical cyclone. This will be uh, a, what is called an extra tropical system. We've had these almost what people are calling inland hurricanes recently. And here in the United States, it looks pretty quiet. But if you pull back on the map, you can see that this could be the center of a system that has these as arms. And so if you think of this as potentially turning into a cyclone, that's the sort of thing that I'm watching for right now with this particular event. And so there is going to be two of these, two of these northern uh, cyclonic storms that may persist for a while. The second one isn't going to start forming, isn't going to start forming for another two days. And so there's one that is forming right now. There's another that will start forming in two days. It could be that this is another region. It's most likely going to be either in the uh, United States, um, over, maybe possibly over the ocean, or in Eurasia somewhere. And so this could possibly be the, the formation, but there have been several in the, in the U.S. recently, and I think that that's probably the most likely location of at least one of these big ones. And so this is the watch for now. And the, I would say that the earthquake, I wouldn't say that it's probable. I would say that it's possible that there is a quake that is over 6.5 in magnitude from this. But I usually don't do a formal watch unless I think it is probable that there is a quake that's over 6.5. But it's, it's not probable, but it is definitely possible. But again, this feature... Um, probably corresponds, hopefully corresponds to this uh, lower level, more frequent activity that is going on in Japan. So thanks for watching.